Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I've been asked by a few people to do an update video on our uh, 2014 Mercedes-Benz ML350, so that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. Um, right now I'm filming this on September 25th, uh, so it's been about 14 months we got this. We got this June 20th, uh, 2014. So I guess it could be like a, a year review. Uh, it's pretty nice out, but we'll just go ahead and start it up. Uh, you can guys can see that everything runs fine still. Uh, it does have 22,578 miles on it uh, in one year, which actually isn't that bad for us at all. Uh, we've gotten up to like 60, 70,000 miles in one year uh, in one of our previous Cadillac Escalade SVs. So 22,500 is a good amount, but not the most we've had. Starts right up. And I have warmed it up a little bit before. Alright, so that's what's going on with that. Um, the interior, you can see, you know, everything is still fine with it. The only complaint, uh, well, I have two complaints actually. First is just minor. Um, you know, this is the Designio porcelain leather. Um, if you guys are uh, acquainted with Mercedes-Benz, this is a special type of leather. Uh, it's called Designio Porcelain. Uh, it also has an Alcantara, or as Mercedes calls it, a Dynamica headliner suede. This whole package cost about $5,000. It's a package offered by Mercedes-Benz. You could also get it in brown leather or black leather, but basically the point is it's all uh, natural grain leather as opposed to the MB Tex, which is fake leather. Um, that Mercedes-Benz offers. Uh, so the complaint is obviously it being white, it gets dirty. You can see here where hands are a lot. Uh, it's dirty. I try to clean it about every once a month, but it ends up being every two months I clean it. Uh, so that's that. Um, you can, might be able to tell a color difference from the back since nobody really sits in the back. Uh, you know, it's pretty clean compared to the front, which is a little bit dirty. Uh, another complaint is since it's a natural grain leather, you have to keep it well conditioned and moisturized. Uh, with this being the first car that has had natural grain leather that uh, we've had, um, I was not aware of that. So it did get cracking along the seats. You might be able to see that there. This is all cracking and some coloration uh, from just jeans and stuff that'll come right out when cleaning. But that's just that's a uh, cracking. Uh, that's because, you know, it wasn't moisturized enough, and uh, obviously the seat is used a lot. 22,500 miles in one year. So, I don't know if Mercedes has a warranty on that, but uh, we have yet to ask them about it. Uh, also, this just got scratched a little bit from shoes and stuff, that's just a minor thing. Um... Everything else in the interior is in nice shape. If you have good eyes and no Mercedes-Benz, you notice that something is a little different, and that's right here. Uh, Mercedes comes with cheap plastic door pins. They literally weigh as much as a feather. They're really cheap plastic. So I bought these Brabus door pins, chrome door pins. Uh, they're actually made for BMWs, but they fit Mercedes-Benz as well. But they're much better, much, much, much better than uh, the factory ones they also come with a chrome base to put around this uh, the this plastic thing at the bottom but uh, it didn't fit over this this might be because it's a different base for the Disney leather I'm not sure um, or just because they're made for BMWs this is Mercedes but it looks much better and I also did on the rear as well they do stick up a little bit higher in the rear that I uh, then uh than normal but you know it's nothing nothing wrong with it that just the screw inside must be just a little off center there and uh, you can see when locking it where's the lock button you know they look pretty good Try to get this iPhone to focus here. You know, everything still works the same, and it doesn't 
void any warranties. So that's a good thing. Um, another thing I noticed on the exterior um, is the rear windows are pretty dark, darkly tinted. I'm not sure if this is an all Mercedes-Benz MLs um, or it might just be according to state, but it looks like they're, you know, I think at least 50% tinted in the rear. Um, this is obviously, we live in New Jersey, and according to New Jersey law, it's illegal to put tints on the front two windows and the windshield, but it's, um, it's completely legal to put tints on the back windows and the rear window as well. So, I just noticed that. If you guys know if uh, all Mercedes-Benz comes like this, uh, that would be nice to know. All MLs come like this if you guys have MLs. Or it just varies per state depending on what the laws are. Uh, let me just open this window so I don't want to get locked out. Um, so, I think it was a good idea to do a video on this because we also did have another few issues. Um, sorry for the dirt in the back, but we we actually got rear-ended um, in July, I want to say, maybe beginning of August. Uh, it was a minor collision, just some guy was going like 20 miles an hour. I think it was a Ford Crown Victoria. It was in Philadelphia, uh, so no surprise there, really. Uh, so he came up here and he smashed this bottom part. Uh, basically what happened was this chrome piece at the bottom was all cracked. This plastic... Um, I don't remember what happened to this plastic. There's just some paint on it, and this got scratched. So obviously nothing too major. Uh, there's also a little bit of scratch on the paint up here as well. Um, this part clips on and off. Um, that's the bottom part of the bumper. It clips on and off, and the clips were broken. So he tried to, the guy who rear-ended us tried to push it back into place, you know, and says he fixes cars and attempts to try to get us to, uh, not try to get us to not report it to the police, but we reported it to the police anyway, um, which will ultimately result in a Carfax report and uh, de a more depreciation when we go to sell this car, but it was worth it. You never know how much this costs, uh, and it was a good thing we did because obviously it's fixed now. There's no collision uh, evidence there anymore, but the total came to quite a bit. I have the receipt inside. I'll show you in a bit. Um, you know, just a word of the wise, guys, if you ever get into an accident, please report it. You might be, you know, you don't want to pay your deductible or you don't want to go through that hassle, but it's it's worth it because you never know what might be wrong internally or what, how much the total pr price to fix the car is. So it's just always good to report it. Um, so that's fixed now. Looks just like brand new. Um, so I do have the receipt inside. I can just show you guys that real quick. So this is the receipt. Um, it's from Compact Cars, which is in Jackson, New Jersey. Uh, that's the repair center. So the total came to $2,359 to fix just that rear bumper, which is mostly plastic. Um, I just don't want to show you guys all the confidential information on here, so. So here's all that was fixed. You know, the rear bumper, the bumper cover with sport package. Uh, without the reversing sensor, we don't have a parking assist in here. Um, you know, clear coated it. Yeah, obviously you guys can read that. The color sanded and polished it. So that subtotal came to 2200. Then all the labor and supplies, 2700, 2900. Obviously, we paid zero. Insurers paid twenty nine hundred seventy eight. On the front here, it was twenty three hundred. That was a. Uh, it was just was, this was just an estimate, the twenty three hundred, and then uh, this was the actual amount. So that's that. Um, another thing is this has gone through a couple services. Uh, so over here, uh, let me just see which one was first. Um, so this one, this one is December 2014. You guys can see that. Um, $220. This was just our service A, I believe. 
Um, yep. Uh, service A, multi point inspection, blah blah blah, complimental exterior car wash. Uh, then he also noted the B service was doing 10,000 miles or in one year, which uh, we hit early, earlier than a year, so. And that came to $222, that's pretty average. Um, now we just got it back from servicing. If you guys have seen that uh, C-Class video that I'm um, putting up soon, that was actually the courtesy car we got from Mercedes-Benz from servicing this car. Uh, this total, Service B, came out to $597. Uh, so this is all they do in here. This is actually a pretty comprehensive thing. Uh, you know, everything from brake service to checking the brake pads, checking the parking brakes, checking the AC refrigerant level, uh, lubricating the door hinges and the seals, the air filter, lubricating everything, checking everything that's fine, you know. So that's all good. You know, um, so this part you might have noticed if you guys know how to read these. Um, blind spot detection system, blah, blah, blah. So a while ago it rained very hard here. I, I think I can insert some clips. Right about now. Whoa. Jesus. Functioned again, but you can see the blind spot sensors are on the side, and it rained really hard. The, the road was flooded, um, it was about two feet of water almost, one and a half feet. Um, so we had to drive through it um, with an SUV. Obviously, SUV drivers are always cocky, so I drove through it. Um, all was good, and then an error message came up here that says. Um, there are three error messages. One was uh, the Distronic Plus service com uh, temporary unavailable, and then it was like, um, please check or something. Blind spot assist temporary unavailable, and pre safe collision prevention temporarily unavailable. Um, those messages came up. So basically, all the safety features that we ordered in this car, you know, lane tracking, the blind spot, the Distronic, all that stuff was out. Uh, this was not the first time that it happened. It happened uh, in the winter as well with uh, snow and ice, I guess. The thing is, the reason why this happens is he actually told us. The sensor is back here, or actually on the other side, if I open the trunk. Uh, if you excuse the sheet. Uh, so it's actually behind here. Um, can I get into this? Let's see. I might not be able to get into this, but yeah. All right, so I can't seem to get in this, but basically, um, it's under, it's behind here, all like the fuses and controls and everything. So when you go through a lot of water or snow or everything, basically what happens is it can penetrate this. Uh, there's a little crack here. The moisture goes up into there, and it actually uh, blocks the sensor. Let me just put this back. So it blocks the sensor. Um, you know, makes it temporarily uh, short out until you restart the car. So that's what that was. Also, the uh, engine light intermittently came on. Don't know what that was. It wasn't because of the fuel cap was tightened improperly. Um, so that's basically that. Um, just a funny thing I just noticed, it says client states to perform a complimentary car wash. We actually didn't state that, but they just gave it anyway, which is cool. Um, you know, the loaner, which is that. Uh, they actually wrote that the tires and brakes may not make next service. Uh, tires we're not worried about because we are getting different, uh, wheels with different tires. I'll explain that in a second. And the total came to 597, which was the same thing as there. So that's that. Um, 
although we do have to go send it back in a week the reason is uh, it's been really hot here the sun has been really scorching and uh, I accidentally I usually close the shade but I accidentally left it open one time um, and it melted this because this is uh, just plastic it's a thin film of plastic and it, it melted this and so that's going back to get replaced that's under warranty uh, they have to order the part so we have to give it back when it comes in that's nothing major uh, just it's, it was just sensitive to the sun the sun was really hot and it melted it um, other than that that's pretty much it on the uh, maintenance of the car so that was let's see um, maintenance wise it was about 700 800 ish uh, for this year um, that's without tires uh, the reason we actually didn't have to get the tires changed was because Continentals which are the base tire that Mercedes MLs come with which is what's on the front right now uh, they're very bad tires let me tell you that first um, so what happened in winter was on uh, this front right tire Uh, there was a bubble here, like a bubble coming out from the sidewall. That just happens from condensation in the winter, and then the tire wall was very weak or something, so it it, it was a uh, bubble. It didn't burst or anything. The tire didn't go out, but uh, we just took it to a local uh, body shop. Not body shop guy, but like a, a tire guy, and he put on hand cooks. Uh, he rotated them, so the hand cooks are now in the back. There are hand cook uh, Dynapro HP2s. Uh, they're 255.50s, so that's that. I mean, the same. I think they're the same size. I think these are also 255.50s. Uh, yeah, the 255.50s. So he rotated them, and these are the new tires. So that's why we didn't have to change them yet, uh, but we're gonna have to soon. Uh, in a couple weeks, we're getting different real wheels. Uh, check out for that video. But they're Lexani CSS7s, and we're getting them on Pirelli tires. Uh, black with uh, matching painted uh, tips. So that's what happened with the tires. That's why the service didn't include tires. Otherwise, for tires, it's like probably another 300, 400 per tire because um, Continentals are very expensive, even though they're not the best. Um. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Um, so we're talking about, on a normal basis, it would be like 1200 uh, per year, maybe on maintenance or so. Interior's in still good shape, except for that thing. Uh, you may also notice back there, that's our Porsche Cayenne. I'm going to try to do a video on that very soon, just to give you a quick little glimpse. Um, but yes, that was an update video on this car. If you guys have any questions, uh, you know, please leave a comment below. And uh, I told you this was going to be a long video. It's almost 20 minutes of an update video on this car. Uh, but there were a lot of things to be said with the services and everything. Um, so if you guys have any questions, just leave a comment below. I'll try to answer it. And uh, I do have some videos coming. I also posted an update video on what's going on with my channel. So check that out to know what's coming soon and why I haven't uh, made that many videos recently. Um, that should explain everything. I'll just give you a quick uh, peek of the Porsche. Uh, it's a 2014 base Cay uh, Porsche Cayenne base um, with a couple aftermarket mods. I'll, I'll uh, go into more detail of that later, but it has a lot of options in it. Uh, so it was our choice to get a base with a lot of options or like a, a GTS or something of higher caliber with less options. We decided to go with the base model with more options just like we did with our ml i mean we could have gotten an ml 550 for the price of this one um 
but we decided to get an ML350 just loaded up with a bunch of other options. Um, one thing that has to go are these wheels. These wheels do not look good at all on this car. They were uh, the wheels that come standard on a Cayenne diesel. Uh, and uh, I just don't think they look good. They're like 18 inches or something on, uh, on Goodyear Eagle tires. They need to go. But uh, with this car, so far everything's doing well. I mean, a lot of people say, I actually got into an argument on YouTube with a couple other people that uh, Mercedes are very unreliable cars, but no, that's not true at all. Mercedes are very reliable cars. Uh, a lot of people just get intimidated because they have so many electronics in them nowadays, but it really is nothing to be worried about. But yeah, that's about it. Uh, you know, I'll see you on the next video. Hopefully, I'll uh, get some videos up soon. But uh, anyway, take care, guys.